Hi, I'm Maddie, and we are sitting down with Fires of Denmark for The Currents Sounds Like Home Volume 8. We just heard his song, Time Will Wear You Down. Uh, thanks so much, Fires of Denmark, for sitting down yeah. with us today. Yeah, we're going to get right back into the next song. It's called It Never Ends. Thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you again for sitting down with us today. We uh, just yeah. track It Never Ends and uh, you know, chat about mm-hmm. music for a second here. Yeah. Oh. Uh, How are you doing today to start off? I'm doing great. Uh, mm-hmm. Last, was it last night? No. When, or on Wednesday, I just uh, did a live stream for Rochester Civic Theater and oh, cool. at the old Chateau Theater. Mm-hmm. And it was probably one of the most magical nights of my life. So I'm kind of floating high right now. So, yeah. Well, I wanted to talk about Rochester since that's where you're from. Yeah. Um, yeah. You want to talk a little bit more about that live stream experience first? That sounds really cool. Yeah. Riverside Concerts is one of our big prides down in mm-hmm. Rochester. Every year we have those big concerts on the plaza. I saw, I saw Cloud Cult there, Dessa, and all these wonderful bands. And uh, because of COVID, we had to, or they had to get a little creative. And they moved it into the old uh, Chateau Theater, not the movie theater, but we used to have a play theater downtown mm-hmm. um, that it turned into a Barnes & Noble. And it, the architecture and the place is just magical. And since then, Barnes & Noble has left and it's kind of been an empty building. So the Riverside Concert started putting on live streams there. And we've all of us Rochester musicians have been lucky enough to kind of jump on there. It's been wonderful. Our own little Austin City Limits. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That sounds like a really cool space and a really cool opportunity that oh, you guys get to jump yeah. back in that building. Yeah. It hurt what, myself. Do you want to talk more, a little bit more about the Rochester music scene? What's it like playing music over there? We've always kind of been like a, a like just kind of a little forgotten thing down here because <laughs> because of a lot of um, contract, bu- contract bubble laws where mm-hmm. performers can't perform within 100 miles. And Rochester mm. is usually in that bubble. So we get missed for a lot of music. So we've kind of had our own little sphere of music um, in town. And in the last like three, five years, it just seems like the talent and the drive and the passion and everything's just kind of been bubbling over as mm-hmm. we're all kind of rising up at the same time. It's been great. And now we're stealing pe- mu- great musicians from Winona. And that <laughs> makes me feel really... <laughs> I went to school in Winona too. So it's kind of mm-hmm. fun to see the people come back over to Rochester and get more creatives here. Yeah, a little friendly Winona Rochester rivalry yeah, yeah. there. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. We're coming for you, Red Wing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's, that's exactly how it'll work. Um, I know that you're part of a group called Rochester Posse that does some sort of multimedia oh, yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What is that? T- tell me more about that group. Um, that is Tyler Ogg's big passion. He's mm-hmm. our, uh, He's a videographer, and he mm-hmm. does all of my music videos, and he mm-hmm. filmed he filmed the uh, live stream too cool and uh he actually used to call in uh to the current and mark wheat would even say like he, i think he went to Lollapalooza and he like called in to give up uh, a thing on the street in Lollapalooza, and mark Wheat called him the rochester posse it, was, it just kind of stuck for us kind of joking That's so around mm-hmm. yeah and then we went to uh midwest music fest in winona and filmed mm-hmm. a kind of like a, a gonzo just on the street grabbing every musician we could and just to talk about music and tyler had the whole we, Festival ended on a Sunday. Tyler had it out on a Monday. And yeah. since then, it's just kind of just trying to find a voice for people. So he's always had a passion of finding artists and giving them a voice. And he'll always do that. It's amazing. Yeah, it's cool that you have that sort of like multimedia connection within your mm-hmm. music scene to get to kind of give artists that platform. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so Rochester's really being collaborative with that. Um, mm-hmm. Like for... A lot of this kind of we're, a lot of us have been working together like different artists and stuff like that. I got like mm-hmm. a tattoo artist that's designed a bunch of my logos and shirts and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. It's great. Luke Austin's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know collaboration has obviously looked very different for all of us over the past yeah. year. How, how has mm-hmm. it looked for you within the Rochester scene? Um, what well, what I ended up doing was I got I, I just got kind of bored and wanted to make more music. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. and wasn't playing live. So I kind of been, a, I made a call out to a bunch of, uh, like lack of a better term, amateur, amateur songwriters, mm-hmm. um, people that have written a song, wrote a song on guitar or, acoustic, or piano, maybe mm-hmm. just recorded on their iPhone. And, uh, I had a call out for that and I got about 10 or 12 songs of different artists, um, that they just sent me. And then I take those little iPhone recordings and turn them into a full fledged produced song. So that's Very what cool. I've been doing with that. And it's been a great way to kind of learn how people write songs and kind of see all the behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. It's kind of quick little one song things. Yeah, that's really cool. What do you think is something that's like surprised you about that process of like working with iPhone recordings and stuff? Um, Well, a a song is 
a good song regardless of the recording. Like you can still mm-hmm. listen to like Lead Belly and feel it, and like mm-hmm. that's one of the earliest recordings we have. Right. So, and I think so many musicians get caught up on how the recording quality sounds. Mm-hmm. So, giving them that ability, just going like, "Hey, nope, you wrote a song. Like, let's mm-hmm. bring that song to life." You know, I think that's kind of been the big eye-opening thing. Yeah, that's really cool. It's a good point to like talk about those early recordings too. And now we've got the iPhone recordings, mm-hmm. which are almost like that the kind of comparative version of that that's yeah. interesting i got i got really into david burns book how music works mm. um and he goes in the big history of how recorded music changes everything and it just blew my mind and <laughs> highly recommend mm. david I, yeah, burns I haven't checked out, oh, yeah anything david <laughs> Burns touches i've just safely assume is gonna be awesome <laughs> yeah 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 seriously yeah, talking about your own musical journey, um, I know mm-hmm. that you have worked within composing and vintage analog mm-hmm. synths and stuff like that. Where yeah. did your <laughs> journey with music start? Um, start. Wow. Uh, if we want to say start, my <laughs> when I was thir- when I was thirteen, the power went out at my dad's house, and I didn't have TV, mm-hmm. and I saw his guitar, and I figured out "Sweet Child of Mine" on guitar, <laughs> just by ear. Uh, mm-hmm. so that, that that's how it started um mm-hmm. but no then i really got into composing and uh and I, learning how bands wrote their songs like shine on you crazy diamond by pink floyd mm-hmm. was one that i actually took apart every instrument and composed it all out so i could see it all looking mm-hmm. back i'm sure that's probably where it all kind of started and uh then in high school we used to have all these improv bands where we just make comedy music <laughs> and but the thing was we showed out like I think we probably just watched too much Who's Line that is it anyway, but we mm-hmm. shoot out a style and, and do that, you know, like it's so like death metal and we play something. So just all those different kinds of styles just kind of helped grow mm-hmm. it. And it's just always been a passion in writing. I can't, I do it compulsively. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting to hear about your sort of like analytical way of looking at music, like taking apart a song like that. Um, yeah. 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 That's, you- I, I've, I've been called a mad scientist once or twice. Um, <laughs> But, uh, and I really don't want to make it also sound like like, it is that I get the analytical side of it, but Mm -hmm. I really dislike music theory. Okay. So, um, I, I I told some person once I was, I'm a music philosophist, not a music theorist, Mm -hmm. but, um, no, I, I'm obsessed with, obsessed with how something makes you feel. So Mm -hmm. like, I'll track out like the, almost like a story circle, the hero's journey of a song. And, uh, so that's kind of passion when goosebumps feel something like why did that make me do that and mm-hmm. i have to like figure that out so that's my that's my mad scientist side <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely i wanted to kind of talk a little we touched a little bit on i mentioned like vintage mm-hmm. since then since then looping what yeah. is your relationship like with that sort of like side of instrumentation and working with that in your music mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. I, I was standard rock uh musician all through the aughts mm-hmm. um And after my first uh, band ended, as it naturally does, Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to make some, I wanted to challenge myself and and I was really into the boy least likely to at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to make an instrument or a band or an album with just kids instruments. Cool. And really, and like just old things I found at like uh, at Goodwill and stuff like that. So that Mm -hmm. really kind of started it. And then I got really obsessed with LCD sound system. Mm, (laughs) And I've always loved the (laughs) kids. Yeah, yeah, and I've always loved The Cure, mm-hmm. and um, my friend gifted me a, a, a really nice synth- Moog synthesizer, so it was like the first time I could actually kind of move those knobs, but only playing with these analog synthesizers for the last, like, probably four years, three mm-hmm. years, and um, I just love how I can actually s- scope the sound and actually get that waves of, like, mm-hmm. the songs breathing and give it depth, um, but seeing two people really kind of put it into my uh, space was seeing Dream Spook, um, Mm -hmm. uh, amazing musician in the cities. I saw him perform in Rochester with Model and it it was like a religious experience to me. Mm -hmm. And and he did like the looping with the synthesizers and I was like, this is what I wanted to do. And I saw it. (laughs) And then uh, the nunnery, um, when I saw her perform with just the looper, it was, Mm -hmm. this is what music could be, this is what music is. And it was like a great thing. And so those two in the last two years, I really kind of pushed the looping and synthesizer stuff. 
Yeah, it's cool you pointed to yeah. like local musicians for that as well. There's such an interesting scene of like people in the in the Minnesota area who are doing yeah. that kind of stuff. It's it, I, the only way I, I like to find kind of unique stuff, and like the only way you can kind of really find truly unique is the people that aren't getting picked up by anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you kind of have to have this sound to kind of rise to a general audience that's going to get mm -hmm. you out there. So finding these local musicians, especially the ones that like don't have the drive for, they don't, they just like make music. They don't right. care if anyone hears it. They just want to make mm -hmm. it. And those, that's, that's, I love finding those musicians. Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to talk about um, your movement series, which are kind of these longer form oh, meditative. Yeah. yeah. Will you, do you want to introduce everyone to those a little bit? I was super intrigued by that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Um, <laughs> I never, never didn't expect that. Um, yeah, I, that's actually how I started doing um, Fires of Denmark stuff was on my Instagram. I started doing just improv loops on sounds. Mm -hmm. And if you go back there, there's still like really early ones of that. And uh, an amazing uh, uh, yoga instructor at Mayo Clinic, mm -hmm. um, she reached out to me and she's like, I want to start doing some uh, local music. Mm -hmm. And so she commissioned me to write uh, that, a 45 minute long, long song for um, a restorative yoga class. Oh, cool. So I, went, I even went in there, she, she gave me a beautiful class and I recorded like the sounds of the fans because there's heaters, mm -hmm. it's a heated room. So it has a, a loud fan sound. So I recorded that to add some like uh, swishing to it to like get mm -hmm. kind of a, like the whole rooms moving. It was so much fun and ended up just releasing it because people enjoyed it. So and I've always had so throughout my career, I have these little songs that don't fit anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like they're not like an album, not an EP, nothing like the radio would ever play. Kind of like Brian Eno stuff, you know, like the mm -hmm. like song for airports. Like mm -hmm. how do you release that? Um, so I just anything as kind of unreleased, I just now mark as a moment so because that's what it was it was just a moment where i made the sound that's very cool and it's so cool to hear that that was for a yoga class and you can kind of immerse yeah, yourself right? in that <laughs> like in any setting that's very cool mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i noticed that in the titles of the songs that we're hearing today uh for sounds like home mm -hmm. there seems to be kind of this reoccurring idea of like time and things yes, moving through yes. time um yeah how mm -hmm. does that inspire how does time inspire your music well, I, I think I think there's an L City Sound System song that what's mm -hmm. up with all these artists talking about time. <laughs> um, I, I uh, I'm not. It's always just been a concept. I think every human, every once in a while, like an mm -hmm. has an existential crisis about time, mm -hmm. just because it's just the strangest thing. <laughs> like this last year feels like it's been ten years, and it feels mm -hmm. like it's been a week. A week, you know. It's right. it's. Um, and really kind of got caught on that. And we ended up writing the first half of the record, um, as one kind of song and it has a poem to it. If you look at the lyrics, mm -hmm. I perform these songs out of order. So the poem doesn't quite work, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, and even through there. So then it's just kind of bigger concepts on the album where we kind of set up a theme of start of that time will wear you down and it goes on and on. So we should start living outside of time with a little call of action and the rest of the album kind of like drifts off and is less rigid on time stuff. And it's really fun. Yeah, I got cool. bored during COVID and got really into it. There's so <laughs> yeah, many Easter eggs no. all over the place. But <laughs> there's, I mean, there's nothing but time to think about time right? as a concept. Exactly. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah I like and when you start doing music stuff, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's fun and the music stuff to play with the time things. It's, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, especially like when you think of music as s sort of an art mm -hmm. that's performed within time. And that's like kind of a mm -hmm. meta thing going on there. Well, very cool. I, I get very meta in my stuff. I'm very meta in my stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a great way to be. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, Mike for sitting down yeah. and chatting today. We are going to hear one more song from Fires of Denmark. This is Start Living Outside of Time.
Thanks for tuning in to Sounds Like Home, a virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music from across the state. Sounds Like Home and the artists performing during the festival is sponsored by Gardner Builders and made possible by Minnesota's Legacy Amendment and you. Your support keeps the current strong and makes sure that independent music and the emerging artists featured today always have a home on the current. All Sounds Like Home sessions will be archived at thecurrent.org because great music lives here. Ah, here, go again. Ooh, who let Joseph in? Dealing with those woes again. You know you can't hold them in. Striking nerves and chords with it. Moving up like Lord willing. Yeah, I'm more willing. Get the dirt done. Yeah, I'm full willing. Then I break out and it's more ceilings. Hey, you give it, I'm giving it right back. Yeah, I got my mind on my mischief. Won't get sidetracked. Yeah, I'm serving looks like crooks. I'm selling rhymes like dimes. So many gems for such a steal. My God, it should be a crime. Here we go. Back to black or back to atrophy. Back to back catastrophes. Get with it away. With it if you get out of G Wish I could add a G for every rapper mad at me After I give a how to rap mango to all their families Naturally I stay laying in the cut Kicking the dust in my Air Max Coughing on some stuff with the squad album Fairfax on that road again That Kerouac I put my city on and hope they have my back Yeah so here we go Go Kicking the sickest thing you've ever known Going for the goals We just trying to stay gold Giving them the greatest story that was never told Get it, then I'm ghost Here we go again Back to the wild unknown again Going through the living in the ghost Inside my phone again Some wanna be a millionaire So they just phone a friend I wanna be chameleon To a Houstonian Heart dipped in chromium Higher than a star string custodians Calling the competition How I see them from the podium They let that fear and loathe And keep controlling them Some think that God It's up to us To let them know they only man In this life of sin it's just me and my girl, wait, in these walls we in, we stressing over every mistake Cause in this life of sin, it's hard for us to live through mistakes Well I wish I knew back when I started killing all these mixtapes You can get your lips take, talking too much blase Rappers act hard, then be singing like Sade Give that kiss a life from the life of the party But keep away your wife and leave me be like Cardi Yeah, and here we go Go. Kicking the sickest thing you've ever known Going for the goals, we just trying to stay gold Giving them the greatest story that was never told Get it, then I'm ghost Yeah, yeah, here we go, go, go Here we go, go, go Here we go Oh, 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 oh Live in stereo This is for the women in my life who make impossible real For the ones who do what's right, don't give a damn how you feel For my day ones holding it down, I see you know it's all love Even when I'm not around to meet you, this is for those apathetic Because they've seen too much, I mean I get it, but don't give up, you might regret it This is for those days and those nights that I sweat it No one stop, that's a legend, so don't stop, get it, get it For the ones that are misunderstood, for the inspire man The block is hot cause we we got fire, man. This is for the authentic. This is for the fire brands. Put up your hands. Uh, this is for you, baby. Now, here we go. Welcome to Sounds Like Home. It is Sounds Like Home 8. I am Sean McPherson from The Current, and we are celebrating Minnesota music in all of its glory. And boy, that's awesome. Here we go from Jay Havoc, an MC out of Rochester. Jay, thank you so much for bringing some music to us. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing really good and I'm doing better to hear a tune like Here We Go. You get so many references into that tune I'm hearing. I got <laughs> Sade, I got a Jay-Z and Beyonce line, a little Jack Kerouac, <laughs> Chameleon yep. Like, Yet, I listened to the tune once and I was like, I got it. I got, I got the references. How do you get so much into your lyrics, yet they're still pr relatively easy to follow? How do you navigate that? Uh, it, it definitely took some time because I've always been like really into like when I was especially a teenager starting out, I was into like some really dense music at times. Like I would listen to like 
I mean, on one hand, I loved like Tupac when I was starting off. And Tupac is very like, he's poetic, but he's very blunt and straightforward. But then I also like grew to like somebody like an MF Doom or an Aesop Rock where it's like, it's very dense. <laughs> so it's like, there's a middle ground in between where it's like, okay, it can hit, but it can also kind of like, yeah, I, I like music where I can go back and I can like listen to it and be like, oh, I get that. Or it's like, yeah. oh, I understand that now. So, I mean, it just kind of like happened over time. I guess I just like from doing a lot. Plus, I like a lot of pop culture. So it's like it just kind of like melds with me. I'm like <laughs> the amalgamation of everything that I've watched and listened to. <laughs> well, you know what? It comes across and sometimes that can be overwhelming, but on that particular tune, it's not. The energy felt really great. And I imagine that that's a song that goes off really well at live shows because it's got that energy. As you've been navigating now a year of, of doing more like web streams or doing more just hanging out at the house and not doing shows, what do you miss most or what are you looking forward to most about getting back in front of a crowd that's ready to rock with you? Uh, being able to get energy and have it come back. It's like, I played this, especially playing this like show over at um, the Chateau Theater. I played uh, live at Med City for uh, Rochester. And it was really cool because it's like that theater is beautiful, but it's like having really basically nobody in there. I'm like, there's some mannequins. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I will just imagine the energy. I can imagine it's kind of like sporting events where you're just like... That's a cardboard cutout. <laughs> like, it makes so much difference to just have a human interaction because I feel like a, a like a good show is like not just like me performing for you. It's like a conversation. You know, it's like, what are, are you feeling it? Maybe you're not feeling it, but I've got to give you more energy and you give me energy back and it becomes this, like, it's, it's a synonymous thing. Like, it's something that's like, it uh, not synonymous, but it's like, um... God, symbiotic. There we go. So right. it's like being able to have that relationship with um, an audience and being able to connect with them is different than just kind of like speaking into the void. As cool as it is to be like, I can talk to anybody anywhere and I can perform in front of anybody. It's like, yeah, it's kind of a little different. <laughs> Yeah. I, when, when I said I could talk to anybody, I didn't include actual cardboard mannequins in my estimation. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever done like an opening slot or played to an unreceptive crowd where you would have preferred to have cardboard mannequins where you felt like you were just getting nothing <laughs> off of actual people? Of course. I used to play in a punk band. I got enough of those. <laughs> oh, all the people that sit like... <laughs> They're still enjoying the show, but... Feel it. <laughs> Oh, I'm real. I really miss live music. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I want to ask a little bit about the Rochester scene because it yeah. seems like, by almost all measures, it has gone a lot better in the last six or seven years. There might be some nuances that I'm missing from up in the Twin Cities, but actually, um, I've, I've met. A long time ago, uh, Mike Terrell from Fires of Denmark, who actually is a collaborator on the next song that you got yeah. coming up. Um, and basically, I probably get three, four emails from Mike a year about what he's been up to. And each oh, yeah. year, it seems like there's more opportunities. There's more people collaborating. There's more times where they're bringing artists in from the cities or elsewhere. But beyond that, there's like robust local support for a lot of the shows that have been happening and more enthusiasm. I've been seeing more YouTube videos of interviews coming out. So as somebody who's been around for a minute, are you feeling that change in Rochester? Oh, absolutely. Like it's, it's definitely a different energy and it's something that's kind of like, it's an amalgamation of everything that's kind of come before it. Because really when I started doing shows and stuff actively in the arts community in town, it was probably like about that time. Like it was about six, seven years ago when I was like really into the, like the arts community and meeting a lot of these people that became like longtime friends and collaborators. And back then there was like, you know, Rochester has a problem where we don't really have a great selection of like venues or like, especially back then, we didn't really have many venues. We had like the Mayo Civic Center, which is a great place, but overall that's more of a space for like larger acts and to bring in like bigger, bigger crowds, which is cool, but that's not going to facilitate like mid-sized bands and touring acts that are going to come through that like maybe aren't going to fill the space out. So we didn't really have anything else besides like bars and whatnot. So especially for rap music, it's like, <laughs> good luck. It was like, okay, you played some cover bands. Cool. You, you, uh, yeah, it's great. But then I'd play with like my uh, band Corporate Failure and uh, we'd play punk music and some places would take us. So I could like weasel into venues that I ordinarily wouldn't have been like seen, which is cool. 
And I kind of was able to meet people that way too. But overall, we've gotten a lot more uh, like good spots. Like they took uh, the old armory and they converted into the castle. And it's our first like medium sized venue that has like a built in sound system. So that makes a big difference. As soon as we are able to like use that space for a lot of events again, it'll be great. Like I remember playing there and that was a fun place. But overall, like we have a lot of work to do to be like, you know, to have all the spaces that we need for people to like do the things that I know that we can do. But overall, like the community has always been very supportive for the most part. Like uh, the arts community is very tight here. So yeah. it's only gotten kind of like better over time. People have came and left, but for the most part, it's it's been like the arts community kind of created a foundation. And now there's a lot of young people that are kind of growing up and that's like, that's already there. So they're kind of embracing it. Like I also do this thing with, uh, with our little organization. We have this thing called a uh, 507 creative collective and we do a show called CC wired. And what we do is we kind of take like local artists either in Rochester or we'll sometimes like look at another scene. Like when we started the second season of the show, we uh, like immediately were like, okay, we just picked Idaho. <laughs> and we were like, we're going to find a scene in Idaho and we're going to make it like where we can put ourselves onto them. But it's also, it's, it works both ways because they're hearing about us too. So our scene is growing to a point where it's becoming a thing that we want to support. And I think the city is also becoming more supportive of it too. Like our new mayor, Kim Norton has been really good about uh, embracing arts and whatnot. Like I did this event back in uh, because of COVID we had this uh, Minnesota music video menagerie where we had a bunch of Minnesota bands submit. Like we had the, uh, the Gully Boys submit. I think the Shackleton submitted and like a bunch of other bands submitted music videos. And we basically uh, had a couple of judges, including it was like me. It was the owner of the Pure Rock Studios. It was uh, Kim Norton and a couple other people. And we judged the videos like what are our favorite videos? And we had everybody come out uh, to the History Center out in the yard and they had like a big mega screen. And uh, we had everybody drive up like it was a drive up deal. And so we were playing the videos on the big screen, but we started with a performance where me and uh, Mike Terrell actually, Fires of Denmark, performed and we performed Come Up at that. So that was fun. That was the first time I ever played that. That was like back in August. But um, so basically we saw, had everybody watch the videos and then the top 10 videos that uh, like the judges had picked, everybody there got to vote on them. And like they voted by car headlights. <laughs> so it's like, you like this song, you put on your headlights. <laughs> and uh, the Gully Boys actually won that. And it was actually a really good, it was a fun time. They had Pasquale's Pizza there. And yeah, but it's just like, we're doing more stuff and like the city's getting more involved in like making sure that we're involved in the arts, which makes a big difference now versus like a couple years ago where it was like still kind of getting its identity. And I think they need that because of the Project DMC that's going on where they're really building up the downtown and the Mayo Clinic and everything. And they're bringing people in from all over the country, like, people come from all over the country and they end up in Rochester because of the Mayo Clinic, whether they're, they're being seen or they're uh, getting a job there. And then those people look at the art scene and they're like, because they need something to do. And so now right. those people, it's like, they'll show up at the shows and it's like, you need to have that community. So that way those people have something to do else. It's just like, they're just hanging out and paying too much rent. <laughs> De you can be honest with me. Does your mayor have good taste? You said you were judging videos with her. Do you feel I mean, like she was on the level? I think she has pretty good taste. And honestly, when I did that uh, that live from Med City thing, she had to sign off on me. So I'm not saying she has bad taste, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. All right, let's jump into this tune. I want to talk about the tune afterwards, but let's check out this performance of Come Up, uh, production from Fires of Denmark. It's Jay Havoc, Sounds Like Home. Like we always do about this time. Now come up. Yeah, now come up. Ha, I was on the come up. Living my life alright. It's true. I've been trying to come up. But how will I come out on the other side? I don't know. Yo, pull up clean, skirt, slay the week. Hey, I mean every day. I don't play the sheep, play no games with me. Foolishly, 
believe what they gon' say I just keep my facts in peace In fact, I'm peace, I'm peace now Dipping out of my own thing Who are you? Huh? How do you rep your home team? Sipping on an OE like an OG Kicking stories about the universe And kicking rappers cold teeth Of course he's Jason Voorhees Coming out of the lake Killing the game That's Jason first Jason And I'm taking the cake My soul is daylight How I'm raising the stakes Raise a glass when I get there For now I'm making a lane And making a case I can see you making a face Did I do that there? I let opportunity knock Like who that there? Put my signature on the globe like I drew that, yeah So when they ask you who's hot You'll say that dude right there Yo, snapping from the gate Miss me with the hit We should celebrate Dancing on our graves It goes hustle non-stop Putting money in the safe Trying to make a way In the home of the brave Yeah, snapping from the gate Miss me with the hit Looking at my watch But don't watch it go to way yeah. Sharks in the waves Wanna see me at my wake But I wake up anyway Set them up like pins Knock them down again That's the state we're in Why do we even pretend? Most of my friends just toss the list I'd hustle to cover they ends I am not stressing for bands, no I'm just improving my lens I'll be going out tonight I'll be coming up alright Bills are coming for my ass I'll be putting up a fight Tunnel vision, tunnel under the competition I still don't understand them Come from the underground And show my city like Atlanta Don't sweat Arm and hammer, road test Panorama, bring some friends We gon' bring some hand Let the games begin Why they be playing the same song? Bro, you got the internet You might find a person of interest That's good news to innocent I'll turn up, but there's greens to be made These rappers talk a lot, but most of them just seem to be paid Huh, snapping from the gate Miss me with the hate We should celebrate Dancing on our graves, it goes Hustle non-stop, putting money in the safe Trying to make a way in the home of the brave Snapping from the gate Miss me with the hate Looking at my watch, but don't watch it go the way he yeah. Sharks in the waves, wanna see me at my wake But I wake up anyway, Minnesota reppin' it ah. Minnesota reppin' it Alright That's Come Up from Jay Havoc. Sounds like home, and that tune features Fires of Denmark. I hope y'all are having a great time enjoying all this Minnesota music. This is so awesome. And Jay, I wanted to ask you a question about this tune, Come Up, because, so, I I, I play in a hip-hop band. I love hip-hop. It's my favorite thing. One struggle with this genre of music is that a lot of times it's hard to have a real dynamic moment because a lot of the production is kind of static. You got the same beat, and a lot of times I think that's perfect. In this case, on this track, the music evolves a little bit, but you also go up to a whole nother speed on the second verse, and you go way harder on your patterns, and you get a little more vocally inflected. When you're working over mostly a static beat, how do you figure out how to tell that full story? Especially as somebody who came from a punk band where you could go, oh, just quiet down for this part. That's not as easy in hip hop. How do you keep yeah. the dynamics in? That's, yeah, that's a really good question. So I, I that's that's another thing like i grew up and like i played in a punk band but also just like listening to other genres of music like i love like i love like a, a band like nirvana where they would really play with the dynamics of sound where it'd be like quiet verse loud chords like i like the idea of like it makes things more interesting and it's like it's kind of harder now in popular music period because everything got so compressed but at the same time i still feel like it's very possible to bring that kind of structure into like hip-hop because in hip hop, yeah, it's like a lot of it is repetitive beat, repetitive beat and stuff like that. So like I'm also a producer, so I like to make my beats where it's like it, there's I layer things out where I kind of layer it thinking of it like almost like a rock song or a pop song where I'm like, I don't want it to just be like this and this is the whole thing or like maybe you change the drums a little bit. But it's like even if I do have a beat like that, every now and then I do like to have something that's a little bit more repetitive. I find that. Uh, the delivery, like whenever I like started recording vocals, I found that to be interesting and to even like sound okay, I needed to over deliver almost. So mm. to make things interesting, you can't do that the whole song though. You have to have like 
punctuation. Like when you're performing, if you're like at 10 the whole time, I feel like it gets a little bit less interesting than like if you can bring it down here and bring it up here. And it's the same thing with like a story. Your story isn't all climax when you're writing a story, else that's going to be overwhelming. Could you imagine if a Marvel movie was all all just like action scene the whole time? Like, blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, (laughs) let me start off, especially on this one, you know? I was like, I want to start off kind of like chill. I'm going to start off in a space where I'm like, you know, just bringing the energy down here. I'm welcoming you in. And then it's like, I can peak, I can come up somewhere. I can come up <laughs> and then, you know, it, uh, it evens off and it falls into the strings and it just chills out a little bit. So yeah, that's always fun with me when I'm making a song to like make it dynamically interesting. I I can't imagine a Marvel movie. That's all action uh, scenes, but I can definitely oh attest to many rappers who are all at 10 the whole time where I'm just going that's like, huge. okay, <laughs> this is, it's this like, is, this is a little much. Know? Yeah, and and I catch a very different uh, level. And again, lest anybody thinks that I I love repetitive music. I love repetitive rap. I think it's fantastic. I'm just impressed that you add that that you add a lot to it, and I think it's fantastic. What is next for Jay Havoc? Like, what's coming up, especially as things start to open up a little bit more? What's on the horizon for you? So I'm working on another project. I've been working on an EP right now. I haven't really came up with a title for it, but I pretty much have like about five, six songs that I've kind of been working on that I feel I'm pretty good with. Like this next song I'm going to do is one of them that um, I've kind of been working on more collaboration, like especially like with my last album, I was reaching out to a lot of people that I had met over the years. And like, I just put that out in December and I've kind of been building off of that also where it's like, I did a lot of collaboration, you know, virtually. So I've been doing it still. And I'm like kind of trying to bring some more elements Every time I do another project or something, I try to like move forward in some way. I'm trying to like improve or do something a little different if it's in my production or if it's in the way I'm doing things lyrically. But um, yeah, I want to make something interesting. I've been like uh, looking to produce for more artists because it's kind of interesting. Like I've been working with some like some pop artists and whatnot like around here and like I like the R&B guys. So it's like I like playing a little bit more with different genres that I might not necessarily always be right on, but like, uh, I think it will be cool to like have an influence and to see what my filter of that would be. We're also, uh, I'm working with, a uh, uh, local artist activist, Bobby Marunas down here on an event that's going to be happening. That's going to be pretty big this summer. It's uh, an event called, uh, art blitz, which we're planning for the end of summer. We're still getting all the piece together, but it's going to be like a big block party and, uh, it's going to be all, you know, all spaced out and everything, but it's going to be like, art it's going to be dancers it's going to be music like uh we're going to have a good blend of like we're going to have like a a stage where we have rock and a folk artist and we're going to have a stage that's going to have hip-hop and r&b then we got like an open mic and uh like a spoken word stage so it's going to be a good time it's going to bring together the community and i think it's kind of like what we've been needing here because we've just been stuck on these virtual shows and that can only that's great but like you know having at least human interaction where you can see humans it's like it's amazing what that does for your subconscious. <laughs> I, I I can't wait. I'm so glad that that type of stuff is happening. I have the album title that you need for your new EP. I've done my it. share of interviews in my creative in my creative pursuits. This is my first one where somebody's used the word amalgamation twice and used the word symbiotic. So symbiotic amalgamation can be the name of the new <laughs> Jay Havoc EP. I got you covered, and we're gonna. We're going to premiere a tune from this release, which I'm sure you're going to call something else because nobody ever (laughs) listens to my advice. Uh, But tell us a little bit about Wild World before we get into this final tune. So Wild World is like, uh, it's kind of bringing in like my influences because I like to bring in a lot of different influences into my music. But one constant has been like punk and rock and music. And I like to bring in guitars and whatnot, just like I did with Come Up. But it's kind of like a different vibe than that, definitely. It's a little bit more like it's kind of... uh, kind of uh, a good tune i'm planning on starting off my next ep with this it's um it's about how we kind of we're going out into this world everywhere every day excuse me and it's kind of like it's it's unpredictable it's predictable but it's unpredictable and you kind of just got to roll with it and i have a line in there where it's like uh i just made a plan then remembered it's real life and it's like (laughs) because that's what it is because it's like i've had plenty of plans in my life and a lot of them have just not panned out but then at the same time a lot of my best moments have just like came out of nowhere and i wasn't expecting them so uh it's it's just an interesting tune about like uh either way 
you know, we're just going to roll with the punches. And I think it's a wild world out here, but I think that we can roll with it. Well, let's roll with it right now. Off of the new EP, Symbiotic Amalgamation, is Jay (laughs) Havoc doing Wild World. Sounds like home. Welcome home. Yo, it's a wild, 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 wild world. Get it independent. Yeah, you got some time, but tell me how you spend it. It's a thin line between living and listless, but this is a wild, 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 wild world. Hope for the best, plan for the worst, or whatever is next. Cash in a check. Watching my step, never been holding my breath For the world to change on its own But a change gon' come, I can feel it in my bones Say I'm cooking up hot-ish, shorty where you gone? You ain't gotta go to college just to get along Yeah, running around my city, good grief's what I'm on Get up on stage, free speech, then I'm gone I might start a revolution with the art heads I might pull a YG, Chief Keith on a song I ain't had peace, real peace in a long time I ain't all that special, I just wake up with the right mind Setting up the table since 09 Now I'm trying to eat good, that's a long line And it's a wild, wild, wild world Get it independent, yeah you got some time But tell me how you spend it It's a thin line between living and listless But this is a whole lot of trial and error But it's a new era, no cap in my speech Cap in the gown didn't guarantee much, but I gotta move up. Hallelujah, say preach. How do you be doing the least, but doing the most at the same time? It's a riddle between Karen and not. I'm supposed to meet you in the middle. Wild world, mad toxic. Try to fix it up a little. Put my youngins on some game that's official. Listen, I don't really mind what you do with your whole life. Just don't play with mine. You should know what it feels like. I've been trying to rise out of ashes, the real type. I just made a plan to remember this real life. And it's a wild, wild, wild world. Get it independent, yeah you got some time but tell me how you spend it It's a thin line between living and listless but this is a wild 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 world Hope for the best, plan for the worst or whatever is next Cash in a check, watching my step move to the I don't really mind what you do with your whole life Just don't play with mine, you should know what it feels like I've been trying to rise out of ashes, the real type I just made a plan that remember this real life Thanks for tuning in to Sounds Like Home, a virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music from across the state. Sounds Like Home and the artist performing during the festival is sponsored by Gardner Builders and made possible by Minnesota's Legacy Amendment and you. Your support keeps the current strong and makes sure that independent music and the emerging artists featured today always have a home on the current. All Sounds Like Home sessions will be archived at thecurrent.org because great music lives here.
I'm Maddie, and you'd welcome to uh, Sounds Like Home, Volume 8 here at The Current. We are sitting down today with the Slamming Doors. You just heard their song, Grown Man. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, Adam. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, we're going to get right back into more music. Here is the Slamming Doors with their song, Villain. There's a villain in the story. There's a villain in the story There's a villain in the story Ain't got no need for the glory He's a desperate man
got a need for the glory. Ain't got a need for the glory. Ain't got a need for the glory. Ain't got no need for the glory. Ain't got no need for the glory. Here we are sitting down with Adam Herman of the Slamming Doors. How are you doing today, Adam? I'm doing great. It, it's really, uh, really rainy and windy up here, though. So I don't know what it's like mm -hmm. down there, but I've got a sweater yeah, it's on. I'm staying in. Yeah, jacket kind of weather today. Yeah. It's definitely rainy. Um, you're up in Duluth. How How yeah. is the music scene in Duluth? I want to chat a little bit about that to start. It, it's starting to come back in pieces now that uh, mm -hmm. the summer's almost here and there's some outdoor shows popping up. Um, you know, being up here, there's with with the COVID restrictions, we were limited to outdoor shows only if we were even doing that. So Duluth mm -hmm. isn't really the best place for outdoor gigs uh, year round. <laughs> so we have to take advantage no. of it. But they're starting mm -hmm. to show up, and there's been a lot of um, good releases. A lot of bands have been just in the studio hunkered mm -hmm. down, and there's been some cool music coming out. Good. Yeah. What's your favorite part about getting to make music in that scene? Well, I've been, so I've only been in Duluth for about five years um, mm -hmm. and I'm still kind of getting to know everybody, but, but the best part of it, I originally was playing music in Denver for about eight years. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that Minneapolis is similar to that with the big city. There's so many more musicians mm -hmm. around and it's a little bit more maybe competitive, a little bit more cutthroat or can be. And this Duluth has been such like more of a family, such a, a community everybody wants to go to each other's shows and support each other mm -hmm. and everybody plays shows together and, and it's been kind of it's been fun getting to know everybody very cool i'm glad that there's yeah. kind of starting to be shows again i know that you yeah. worked on curating a show for the end of the summer yeah the northbound caravan mm -hmm. and uh oh sorry did I, the lag oh, no, I was just gonna ask kind of no you're good uh, i was just gonna kind of ask like what you had in mind when you were working on curating it and what you're kind of excited about it well, we this is we've done it before in the past a few times. Mm -hmm. We did the Northbound Caravan was kind of an idea of bringing up acts from Minneapolis or from St. Cloud, just other areas, and kind of mm -hmm. share the community, share the space together. And we we did one in Ely before. We did one in um, Grand Rapids, and now now we're doing one in Earth Rider Brewery in Superior, just across the bridge. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be, you know, there's a few Duluth acts involved, and then um, a lot of Minneapolis folks are coming up and so we made kind of a short list of, of people just to ask right away and everybody said yes 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 mm -hmm. so it was it's been really exciting um the mm -hmm. lineup is it's bonk it's so good um mm -hmm. i don't know should i t say the lineup yeah we, talk we, about we, it go right? ahead yeah mm -hmm. yeah so from minneapolis we have the von tramps are kind of come up mm -hmm. uh the plot hounds turn 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 will be up here awesome. um yeah eric koskinen just playing one night. Amazing. We're mm -hmm. going to play both nights kind of like in the middle of it, you know, not like headlining mm -hmm. the show or anything. But. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Superior Siren from Duluth and Lanou, mm -hmm. Sarah Kruger's new project is is going to be yeah, part of it too. It's an awesome lineup. Was, yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. I think that's kind of part of the benefit of like getting to start to plan these shows is I bet people are pretty eager to say yes to yeah, doing things. Yeah, and everybody understands you know, the COVID mm -hmm. protocols, our budget is a little bit tighter because of it. We can only have so mm -hmm. many people and, and we're taking that very seriously and everybody mm -hmm. just kind of gets it. We're all just trying to rebuild it, you know? Right. Try to find that community in the ways that we can now. Um, it's yeah. definitely looking up as compared to this time a year ago, for sure. Yeah. It's crazy. It's been a year. Yeah, it has been. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the Slamming Doors are such like a lively band that I feel like live shows were kind of big part of your what what makes the band so entertaining to watch. Um, do you feel like you've kind of like changed the way that you look at the project in the past year? Well, no, <laughs> I tried to do the streaming <laughs> okay. thing. You know, we mm -hmm. tried to do the streaming stuff early on, and and it just didn't have the same way to connect with people. And I thought my best use mm -hmm. of time would just we just got in the studio and just started writing and mm -hmm. just uh, putting new putting new music out on other platforms. Mm -hmm. We did a few videos and things like that, which which have been fun. But I miss playing in front of people so so badly. Yeah, I mean, that's really where it feels like we're really connecting. And mm -hmm. my philosophy with music has always been just book shows, play shows, write music, record music. Not, mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I get lost yeah. in the the minutia of social media and all that. I I, I genuinely dislike it. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Fair, fair point for sure. Um, speaking of getting into the studio, I know you've put out two volumes now of your upcoming Brown mm -hmm. Bears album. Yeah, what is your kind of, what was your kind of approach to writing that album in the studio? Like, what was distinctive from that from your previous releases? Uh, previously, we'd always gone to other studios to mm -hmm. to work, and it always felt um, not rushed. We always worked with really fantastic people. Part of Brown, mm -hmm. part of the Brown Bears album, we went to Sparta Sound and worked with Rich, and so mm -hmm. it's always been fun. But we wanted to build kind of our own studio and and just learn all aspects of it and put on a different hat for mm -hmm. a little bit. And that was kind of the experiment where we got to sit around in my attic here where I'm at right now and just um, mm -hmm. and not worry so much about time. If we didn't like the mm -hmm. takes, we could come back and do it again. And and there was no. Uh, no budget really involved. We're just kind of building it as we go. Yeah. So it's been an experiment, but it's been fun and I'm learning a lot. Mm -hmm. I used to not even know how to use a guitar amp. Like I'm just not Oh yeah. I play acoustic guitar and that's it. And now I'm just slowly mm -hmm. learning all this stuff. So Yeah. What do you think is like one thing that has been particularly exciting to learn about recording music for you? Uh, the creative aspect of it has been amazing. I, just thinking about different uses of like effects and reverbs and, and mm -hmm. panning and, and just thinking about it in such a different way than mm -hmm. chords on a paper and chords on a guitar. And right. Uh, our, my bass player, Ben, is, is such an incredible resource with this. He went to IPR and studied mm -hmm. recording engineering and everything. So he's he's kind of got all the tools to to put any creative ideas to to use. And it's, it's been that's been super fun for me. Very cool. I know you put out these, this Brown Bears album as sort of like multiple volumes. What was your sort of reasoning for breaking it up like that? Just, it was just something different than, than having mm -hmm. a CD release show. It, you know, the way that the music world's working now is you have to just always have content, content, content. And right. it, I'm a slow writer. It takes me a long time to write 12 mm -hmm. songs that I want to put on an album. I'll write 30 and hate 20 of them, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So I just, with something like this, it felt like we could, especially with when COVID hit and we stopped having shows, it felt like a way to mm -hmm. kind of stay active and have something to kind of consistently promote and keep up with people yeah. that enjoy our music, if there are any, I don't know, besides my mom, maybe. <laughs> We're but, here enjoying it. And I'm, yeah, no. that's an interesting, I think that's a fun approach. And I know you have a third volume coming out in the near future. Is there yeah, a really it's already on done. That? We're just kind of, mm -hmm. I think what I want to do is once we're, once we put that out, then we're just going to have it as a full album and then I'll give mm -hmm. in and put it on Spotify and iTunes and all that. <laughs> I, I kept it off of the streaming platforms. I'm kind of, kind of, uh, against them a little bit in the way they, they pay the artists. So, but that'll mm -hmm. be on there. And then I want to press a vinyl of the full thing. Yeah, that'll so be exciting. And hopefully... It. Yeah, hopefully there'll be some sort of show that can kind of go along with that. We'll be back in that point and at that place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. so I know in addition to writing songs, you also have written a book. Um, do you want to yeah. talk about that for a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I wrote a mm -hmm. book called Limbo, an odd novel. And it's mm -hmm. just a, it's very goofy. It's very um, mm -hmm. comical, like Monty Python kind of humor um, about the afterlife. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Two friends, you know, their journey to to hell, and it, it's just silly. But I, I yeah, I, I started writing that a long time ago, and I just picked it back up. Thought I should finish this, and I just fell in love with it. And and as soon as that was done, I started writing a second book. And I'm I'm actually leaving next week to I'm from Quincy, Illinois, so mm -hmm. a little redneck river town right on the right on the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna go there and visit family for ten days and just finish this book because it's been in my computer for two years now and I just I want to get it over with. Yeah, absolutely. How is writing books similar or different from writing songs for you? That's a great question. I, mm -hmm. I don't know because they both inform each other on certain mm -hmm. ways and then they both take away in, in certain ways. I find mm -hmm. when I was writing Limbo, I was just deep in writing this book and I was writing 2,000 words a day just firing away trying to mm -hmm. get through it and then I my songwriting became very stale i thought right and then but when i first started limbo and i've been writing songs for so long and we put out saint john's dance of uh, our previous album so i was writing that 
<laughs> you can tell if you read the book, like the beginning of Limbo is very poetic and just mm -hmm. written differently and it turns into prose. It kind of morphs into it. And so now I, I don't know. I, I think I've, I've, I think I've really taken advantage of having more of a storyteller mentality with writing songs. So it has helped mm -hmm. me in the long run. And I've been writing more. A lot of these songs on Brown Bears are written through the eyes of a character rather than just about me. Cause I, I get tired of me very quickly. So <laughs> yeah. That's made it, yeah. that's made it more interesting. That's very interesting. You have sort of that songwriter's approach to writing novels and a novelist's approach to writing songs. That's, that's yeah, a super it, interesting. Yeah, they've worked together. It's, it's, I think writing is just writing. You're getting something out there and you have a point. Mm -hmm. If you read a lot, that helps your writing. And I, I tend to read a lot and I listen to a lot of music and that tends to help songwriting. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, kind of segueing off the point of listening to music. I know you guys put a Willie Nelson cover up on your band camp for a for around the holidays um yeah if you were sitting sitting by the lake lake superior on a, a nice day in duluth maybe a little bit warmer than it is today um what's your like ultimate playlist for um a sunny day in duluth oh my gosh well i am <laughs> i i i am very weird i i, I annoy people mm -hmm. with my music i found i am <laughs> obsessed with uh obsessed with lyle lovett i will listen okay, to lyle awesome. lovett all the time and mm -hmm. Ramon Bello, I've been listening to like crazy. I don't know if mm -hmm. you're familiar with them. Yeah. That, and just kind of this uh, Mark Knopfler. I'm a huge Mark Knopfler fan. Mm -hmm. So just songwriters, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. I, I tend to listen to more of um, when I'm writing. Obviously, with my writing, uh, working on my book, I I can't really have anything lyrical on because it distracts mm -hmm. me. So I listen to a lot of old jazz just because it feels like I feel fancy, you know. Gotta, <laughs> there you go. Gotta have that. Setting a mood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of local music that I've been I've been really mm -hmm. loving. Uh, Lanou, Sarah Kruger's new stuff. Oh, it's um, great. Yeah. I've been yeah I've been working on an album with um, Lila Abukader. She's a, a younger songwriter, mm -hmm. and she's been coming into the studio and putting some of her songs out. So I've been working with her a lot and listening to a lot of like uh, different stuff to kind of feel like mm -hmm. get into what she's trying to do. Um, a lot of beach bunnies and things like that. And, Oh, cool. It's fun. It's fun to experiment yeah. and listen to different things. So, I don't know mm -hmm. if I have one playlist. My Spotify algorithm would be a mess if... It, <laughs> Lyle Love It, Beach Bunny, Old Jazz, <laughs> yeah, exactly. All the Above. Yeah. Right. Yeah, perfect soundtrack to uh, Sunny Duluth Day. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is Maddie with the 8th edition of Sounds Like Home here on The Current. We just sat down with Adam Herman of The Slamming Doors. We're going to get one more song from The Slamming Doors. Here is them with Waking on in the Sunlight. Whoa, Waking in Your Sunlight. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Adam, for taking time today. Thank you. I've got a hammer And I got a nail They hang this old picture of us Mountains and veil There goes the summer again Time slips away But nobody knows me well these days You left a wind shine, bamboo and brass. Now when I hear it, oh, it takes me back. I'm still drunk in your kitchen. We're still wet from the rain. Nobody knows me well these days. I'm going back where I came from and find some semblance of a lie. Cause most of me is still waking in your sunlight. What's left though? Setting south on 35.
Time is a wheel a Practical joke An infinite circle of love It's like count smoke Now the universe grows Over billions of years So what were the odds now We'd both be here Well I'm going back to where I came from Find some semblance of a life Most of me is still waking in your sunlight What's left though, setting south on 35 Thanks for tuning in to Sounds Like Home, a virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music from across the state. Sounds Like Home and the artist performing during the festival is sponsored by Gardner Builders and made possible by Minnesota's Legacy Amendment and you. Your support keeps the current strong and makes sure that independent music and the emerging artists featured today always have a home on The Current. All Sounds Like Home sessions will be archived at thecurrent.org because great music lives here.
Hi, I'm Maddie, sitting down with Goodnight Gold Dust for a, another Under the Currents virtual sessions for Sounds Like Home, Volume 8. Super excited to be here. We just heard their song, What a Time. Thanks so much for sitting down, you guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. We're so happy to be here. Yeah, we're going to jump right back into your next song. Here is Ring.
here with Goodnight Gold Dust for Sounds Like Home. Uh, thanks so much for coming in again, you guys. How are you doing? Doing well. Yeah, yeah thanks doing for well. having us. Feels so good to be uh, having a conversation with you. We're so honored and mm -hmm. thrilled to be asked to be a part of this. We're feeling great. Good. Well, we're glad I to have that. <laughs> yeah, did, good to all around. Yeah. Um, well, you guys are from Mankato. Uh, I wanted to kind of just start by talking about what's your relationship with the music scene like there. Sure. Um, so I, I moved to Mankato in 07 for grad school mm -hmm. um, for writing. And then I was uh, didn't really intend on. I mean, I had no plans to kind of I didn't know what I was going to do. But mm -hmm. then I met Laura. Uh, yeah. And long story here. there. Yeah, yeah, I moved here in um, like 2009 yeah. for mm -hmm. graduate school in gender and women's studies mm -hmm. and uh, didn't know what I was going to do after that either. And then we started a band together. Yeah, that was so we started the group in 2010 um, and mm -hmm. a lot of lineup changes over the past 10 years, um, a lot of different sound, you know, evolution as well. Um, but the music scene in Mankato is so cool. Uh, there's so many like really, really, really great artists who are just like working as hard as as anybody down here. Um, you know, obviously COVID was sort of, a, we took a bit of a hit just like everybody else. But um, last summer, outdoor shows really picked up. Um, we played maybe six or eight outdoor shows last year. Mm -hmm. And I, I know some friends of ours who are now fully vaccinated are, are feeling a little more adventurous and they're kind of mm -hmm. venturing <laughs> out to play more right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a really inspiring music scene. Uh, mm -hmm. We have such a great kind of tight knit crew of folks who play all on the same bill, even though we're very um, diverse musical uh, mm -hmm. acts, right? So uh, that's been a really great part of the Mankato music scene. Folks are really, really supportive. Everybody's pretty darn hungry for live music yeah. right now, including us, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're looking way forward to the summer when we get to play outdoors and mm -hmm. see our friends, right? I mean, these are people mm -hmm. we were seeing on a super regular basis. Yeah. And now we're doing like weekly zooms to talk about books that we're reading <laughs> and maybe like share a song via email but it's gonna be so amazing to to see everybody mm -hmm. again and mm -hmm. feel that inspiration again from each other yeah yeah, it's interesting that you point out those relationships that I feel like we all are people who frequented live music had with people at that we'd see at shows. It's such a strange like absence in my life where I'm like, that was where I saw a lot of people exclusively. And now, yeah, that's been just such a shift. Yeah. And, and, and I think that, that, you know, as, as like musicians and songwriters, um, mm -hmm. you know, speaking specifically about being musicians and songwriters, um, you know, you go to a show, you see a, a new group and you go, wow, that was really cool. You get inspired mm -hmm. and maybe that inspires you or, you know, us to like write mm -hmm. something new or to try something new and mm -hmm. to, to not quite have had that immediate inspiration, you mm -hmm. know, from, from going to shows and playing with groups. Um, last year was, I, you know, I, I didn't find myself in any sort of like a, like a creative rut. I was, I had a pretty high output of just like random, all, all mm -hmm. sorts of things, but still, man, I, nothing beats being at a show and seeing people just yeah. performing. Yeah. I did find myself in a bit of a creative rut. <laughs> it was tough. It was tough mm -hmm. for me to imagine writing a song and then not playing it. That mm -hmm. was the tough spot for me that I've been in. So it's been a little while since I've written a new song, but I also think that's okay. Like we have to refill, you know, we have to fill back up and it totally makes sense that during a global pandemic that we would be feeling a little less energy yeah. creatively or otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> so, Absolutely. uh, but yeah, playing with other folks, inviting them into in the past in our home, playing mm -hmm. um, at, for the gold mine uh, shows that we were hosting. Yeah, we used uh, to host living room shows. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then that was always we always featured a local artist as the opener, and then uh, a traveling artist later in the evening, like really, really amazing experiences throughout our lives. People who we've gotten to meet. I was just reflecting on this the other day. Like folks who we have such strong connections with who maybe we met once or twice mm -hmm. at a show. Yeah. And that bond is just so forged. Yeah, that is kind of the cool thing about about like being musicians and going to shows and playing shows is just to kind of echo what you just said. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can meet a person, that, that player, that performer, and 
somehow you've known each other for your entire lives yeah. because you're mm -hmm. just you're just sort of you've been doing the same thing the whole time yeah. and and you respect yeah. and love each other's yeah. work and mm -hmm. so you know each other so intimately so quickly yeah and to not have had those experiences mm -hmm. with new artists and with folks who we've been friends with for a while yeah it's been strange yeah it's been <laughs> tough to say the least to, <laughs> to say the say very the least, least on absolutely. the matter yeah yeah, you guys kind of touched on um, that you had opened up your home to host touring acts and local acts. Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, fueled your decision to start doing that? We for we for, we moved in together uh, in like 2011 into mm -hmm. a small little one bedroom, more of a closet sort of bedroom <laughs> uh, apartment. And then straight from there, from paying like paying honestly pennies for rent, we moved mm -hmm. into still renting, but we moved into this giant old 1917 like craftsman style house mm -hmm. um just huge rooms 12 foot ceilings 400 rooms in the whole place you know mm -hmm. and uh the house always you know laura's uh would be the laura always said the house only really felt right when it was full of people yeah. mm -hmm. um and so i i think it was it was your idea you just out of the blue were like what if we hosted living room shows and then we yeah. started doing it yeah, I think maybe we had seen John Stotts at a living room show. Yeah, um, that's right. And then actually that living room, this was a friend of ours, John, played a living room in Minneapolis like six years ago. And that mm -hmm. living room, those people started the warming house, right. mm -hmm. uh, which we never went to. But Before. still, that, that was, that was yeah. inspiration for it. Yeah, yeah, totally. So seeing another living room show and being like, hey... There's not a venue like that at that time in Mankato, this like mm -hmm. intimate venue. That was the idea, right? Was sure, absolutely. The house feels best when we're having parties, mm -hmm. when we're having people there, when there are a lot of voices. But also we wanted to be able to offer musicians, artists, that environment where people were really there for the music, were listening to the music, yeah. uh, were about the artist or artists and that's what we felt we could offer through the living room concert series. Yeah, like there's no like espresso machine <laughs> slamming away or like random people just, mm -hmm. you know, stumbling about. It's, there was, it was always like 20 to maybe 30 at most people just seated politely in our yeah. living room. Our, our, our cat would just sort of go from person to person and mm -hmm. hop up on stage occasionally and hang out. Yeah, it was yeah. really cool. And then we, we just, we bought a house in middle of or early 2019 and mm -hmm. love the house. It's a great place. And we, we sort of stopped doing the living room shows because we, mm -hmm. you know, kind of couldn't quite revision it in the new mm -hmm. place in and the then space, yeah. and then you know the pandemic happened so mm -hmm. uh yeah so we're you know now that we're trying to like now that we're getting back feeling a little more sort of safe about performing and things like that again um i keep looking at our backyard which is quite big mm -hmm. and there's a cool we have a cool like mm -hmm. low garage with a very like flat rooftop <laughs> oh. i keep imagining like a beatles sort of rooftop oh, performance yeah. you know? that'd be awesome <laughs> so, yeah yeah very so cool. those are some of the thoughts yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, Otherwise, that, it's been like, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that intimacy that you're talking about sounds so familiar with what you were talking about with the Mankato scene at large. It sounds like that's a great fit for the kind of community you have there. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. And booking some other stuff, Colin's been booking with our friends who own the oh, wine yeah. cafe in town, yep. booking mm -hmm. some shows. So kind of maybe um, moving the same environment, the same idea, the same theory to a, a different physical location. That's right. That's that's where I left off in 2019 mm -hmm. when, when we moved into our new house, which we have yet to name. The old house was the gold mine. <laughs> <Right>. uh, <laughs> uh, that was sort of where my where my head was at. It was like, what if we got a storefront and like started mm -hmm. hosting like shows and doing this whole thing? And And then it was sort of, you know, obviously this is pre-pandemic. So it mm -hmm. was sort of like in, in my like sort of reasoning of of that, it's like, I want to also still be performing music. So how can I, do I really want to be a venue? Mm -hmm. Do we really want to be a venue owner operators and still perform? And how do you make the ends meet? Yeah. And so the pandemic happened and <laughs> I haven't thought about that until just <laughs> <Exactly>. now. <laughs> of course, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, for better or worse. Mm. Yeah, you guys have talked about a little bit that you started this band back in 2010 and you, you mm -hmm. know, moved in together in 2011. How has that evolution over the past decade looked for Goodnight Gold Dust? That is wild. That yeah. Is <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Wild. It just like mm -hmm. I was really excited for last year. I was like, man, we're going to do a retrospective. You know, mm -hmm. there's a there's a they just built these new like sort of low skyscrapers, so to speak, yeah. in town. Uh, and 
people were doing like yoga, I think, mm -hmm. on, 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 on a rooftop. Yeah. And I was like, man, what if we did Good Night Gold Dust 10 year anniversary, you know, weekend long sort of bash with sun setting behind us and this whole mm -hmm. thing, friends, bands, this whole, the whole nine yards and, uh, you know, the pandemic happened or whatever, yeah. but you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the plan was to, to like do a re real retrospective. Um, mm -hmm. cause we've, uh, we mentioned earlier, we've gone through so many sort of lineup changes and tweaks and, um, really our sound has just fully evolved and it kind of started out, we started out, I guess, to answer your question mm -hmm. a more formally, mm -hmm. we started out, um, playing Laura's mm -hmm. songs, uh, which were in the sort of like folk kind of, kind of alt country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really like, rollicking sort of boisterous but very also moody you know sort of tunes <laughs> of course. and then i kind of like butted in with my like punk rock kind of background and we sort mm -hmm. of met somewhere in the middle and it was really cool that first lineup was sort of like a five it was piece. like loud you mm -hmm. know it yeah. was shouty yeah but um, lots of hooks guitar solos you know it was cool. yeah it was different <laughs> from what it is now obviously but mm -hmm. i think that yeah what you're speaking to colin that figuring out like where's the middle and which song needs what uh, was something that we have put, we've given more attention to as mm -hmm. the band has continued on. Yeah. Whereas at first it was just like, let's just get this out there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember like we only had like seven songs for our first, this is again, this is going back 10 years, like seven mm -hmm. songs for our first set, one of which was a cover, I think. And so like all mm -hmm. the songs had like these extended solo sections. Right. Because <laughs> you got to fill an hour, right. you got to fill time. <laughs> yeah. So dude, yeah. it's freaking out like, you know, 20 mm -hmm. minute solos, um, which is pretty far from where we're at now. Yeah. Um, but Honestly, what I'm thinking about as we're mm -hmm. talking about this is just mm -hmm. how supportive the Mankato scene was. Mm -hmm. People were so kind and were really like showing up and dancing and inviting us to be on shows. And we were just, I mean, I was pretty brand new to the community. So that mm -hmm. felt really good. And we wouldn't have kept going if mm -hmm. we hadn't gotten that support. Right. That's community. very true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. know what we would have done. There's a really know. robust hip hop scene in Mankato, mm -hmm. and they were super kind to us. Really um, mm -hmm. invited us to be on shows and stuff, and uh, we had some incredible, incredible early shows that, that yeah. ten years ago. That just like really surprised us, you know, because yeah. I, I had been in bands all through high school and all through when I was an undergrad too. Mm -hmm. Just you know, like knock around kind of groups that you play in play basement shows yeah. which are always so much fun but this like with with gold dust when i started when i started playing with laura it was the first time where i realized like oh people like us <laughs> like like we're not yeah. just like some like niche thing mm -hmm. you know that's sort of making noise in a basement like like a wide sort of range of people mm -hmm. enjoy this music and that was sort of brand new to me yeah. It was a good feeling. And, and you know, that's I, I like to think that we are still uh, experiencing people enjoying our music. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, from a distance. From, nice. from exactly. a distance. From a distance. What's that, what's that tune? You oh, know. I could sing the whole you thing. Could, yeah, do it. I, is, it is that uh, Babs? You can. It, it Let's, can be. <laughs> okay, I don't know. We shouldn't sing it. We'll have to pay for it. Bette right. Midler. Yeah. Bette Midler. The other Babs. Save it for the retrospective. <laughs> Hopefully, a sunset show soon with a little yeah. Bette Midler. <laughs> oh my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome to hear that you got so much local support. It sounds like the community there mm -hmm. is really close knit, yeah. and that's awesome. It is, uh, yeah, and yeah. Sorry, keep going. Oh no, keep going. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I, I guess mm -hmm. I was just gonna put in a little mm -hmm. plug for. Um, KMSU, our local uh, college yes. radio station, mm -hmm. they've, they've been hyper supportive of us and really of the Mankato music scene at large, mm -hmm. uh, so I guess probably since their inception. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of awesome folks down here. Yeah, that's great. We have one more song to hear from you guys. Do you want to tell our listeners, our audience here, anything about Owls coming up next? Oh, yeah. Wow, Owls. Mm -hmm. uh, so this song, I think it was about a year ago, yeah. mm -hmm. we have a little keyboard in our bedroom it's a full-size 88 keyboard okay <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's a, it's a, i mean it's, it's, not, a, like it's a, not like a like a grand piano <laughs> it's a keyboard it's a casio px 160 for the listeners <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe for more information <laughs> yeah, if you want to hear me go on about gear just <laughs> sorry i'm sorry so i walked over to the um, full size, gigantic. Weighted <laughs> keys. <laughs> and I'm also I also work at a music shop in town, so I'm just, mm. this is my sales pitch. Mm, yes, <laughs> this is a good time for it. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so I walked over and I was just kind of messing around uh, one morning and I'm not um, a terrific pianist by any stretch of the imagination. I wouldn't even call myself a good pianist, <laughs> but I've got a handful of chords. My grandmother paid for um, piano lessons for my me and my siblings throughout our childhood because mm -hmm. her mother had been a very excellent pianist. She had gone to college mm -hmm. for piano performance in Madison, which is like such a cool thing to think about. So cool. mm -hmm. And when I play the song, I do think about her and that connection that I have to her. Um, the song, yeah, just kind of came out all in one day, which was a great feeling too. Mm -hmm. And I often have to relearn it because if I play something, it's usually guitar. So I have to remind myself exactly mm -hmm. like the finger placements on the piano and everything. But that was a song actually that we were getting ready to learn with my uh, side project, Given Names. And mm -hmm. we had practiced it a few times and we were going to do it at our next show. And mm -hmm. our next show would have been in March yeah. or April of 2020. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course that didn't happen. So it was really exciting to, uh, we're excited to be able to perform it here yeah. for mm -hmm. y'all. Yeah, that's awesome. We're excited to hear it. Thank you again, Colin and Laura, for sitting down and chatting today. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're going to hear one more from Good Night Gold Dust. Here is Owls. Thanks for tuning in to Sounds Like Home, a virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music from across the state. Sounds Like Home and the artists performing during the festival is sponsored by Gardner Builders and made possible by Minnesota's Legacy Amendment and you. Your support keeps the current strong and makes sure that independent music and the emerging artists featured today always have a home on the current. All Sounds Like Home sessions will be archived at thecurrent.org because great music lives here.
Welcome to Sounds Like Home 8. I hope you're having a great weekend. I'm Sean McPherson, and it's so much fun to be connecting with musicians all around our area. And right now, we're heading up to Sparta, Minnesota to talk to Rich Matson as well as Jermaine. And welcome so, welcome to both of you guys. How are you doing today? Good. Very well. Thanks for having us. Doing good. Uh, Jermaine, in all of my research, which involves some really exciting questions, I didn't write down your last name, and I didn't want to just do the Rich Matson and Jermaine. Oh. May I ask your last name, Jermaine? Yes, it is Gamberling with a G. <laughs> Gamberling. All right. Well, welcome. How are things going up in Sparta today? Pretty good. It's We're nice. A little bit of rain. Screening it's, up. It's moist out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Boy, you know, I don't think the weatherman is ever supposed to be like, it's a it's a moist one today. I think you could get canned <laughs> from the gig reel. <laughs> it's not pouring or anything. It's just it's just a little, you know, well, moist. I heard my first it's robin. A... Okay. <laughs> yep, yeah, and reports are they're they're out there in the neighborhood. Yeah. Now this this record uh, that the Rich Matson and the North Stars just put out uh, has some fantastic sounds, and it definitely doesn't sound like a pandemic record because a whole bunch of the tracking was actually done before people had to go into some level of isolation. And then Rich, it sounds like you've been kind of working and working on making sure the thing sounded as good as it could be before you got it out. Can you tell me about those two parts of the process, the the fun times with the whole band and then kind of working on it on your own after, after the pandemic hit? Um, well, I'm always writing. I, I I come up with you know I'll I'll be playing guitar and usually I'll start with something that I've played before or somebody else's song and eventually I'll just wind up with a riff or something like that and and I'll and you know we'll we'll rehearse it with the band and it, sometimes lyrics come first it's it I take all different approaches with it um, I guess we 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 recorded the songs that we had that were all kind of dialed in there were probably like eight or nine of them and then there were a couple that i had no idea what was going to happen with them we just kind of recorded the music and we went we took a trip we uh we went to las vegas actually on a on a on a vacation we went out there to go to death valley and see the see the sights and um I, I allotted myself twenty dollars to gamble with, which I didn't even get around to doing. Yep. We don't know how. <laughs> We're lost we when it comes to. to that stuff. So we, yeah, no big deal. But uh, on that trip, I finished up Death Valley and the song In Flight, which were just basically what I was doing. And uh, we got back and uh, and I started working on guitar overdubs and vocal overdubs, and then we wound up being in lockdown for, well, ever. And I just, you know, had a lot of free time, and I spent that time. I made some videos and put them on YouTube, just myself and acoustic guitar. Jermaine joined me for a bunch of those. And I just whittled away at, at Skylights and working on trying to get it the sound the best we could. I'd drive around in the car listening to one song, you know, and come back and work on it some more and take another drive and Yeah, you gotta hear how it sounds it in the car. More. And uh yeah, Jermaine had had one song that was kind of unfinished and she finished that. We'll we'll hear it in the program here. And she finished that after what happened uh Yeah. Last spring. I usually cool. write the melody when I write a song, but the words on that song I had not finished the last two verses until post lockdown so yeah well the result the results are really cool and I, th I think that's what matters but i also know from checking out uh what sparta sound has been about and and rich and jermaine what you've been about i also know this is a place where people come up to connect and to get really comfortable in the recording situation. I've spoken to Dave Simonette who has done some recording up there and my good friend Martin Devaney who's done a lot of work up at Sparta for a long time now, you were you didn't you couldn't have people in your studios, and I think you've just started having some sessions. How was it? So suddenly, if you're in the middle of nowhere, but Trampled by Turtles is coming up on the weekend, it feels more social. Now, if you're kind of in the middle of nowhere and you can't even run into your neighbors because you're kind of far away, how did you guys do during the pandemic period when you were really locked down? Ah, it was challenging, but yeah. we were lucky to have weird. good weather that we were able to spend a lot of time outside and we have room to wiggle out here in the woods. I mean, it's a it's a recording retreat. So so I mean, the good times here are, are pretty, pretty.
pretty awesome. I mean, just the, you know, you spend the whole day tracking and then we bring it out in the living room and have this listening party and everybody's, you know, just vibing and having a great time. And I really miss it still. I mean, we're, I'm starting to take sessions again, but you know, we're not having people in the house and it's, uh, you know, we're masked and, and it's a little weird, but, uh, we're, I'm starting to do more recording with people and mostly with local artists there of, of which there are plenty. Well, I'm excited to talk about the local artists that are bubbling up on the Iron Range, but let's not talk too long uh, before we get into this first song. So let's check out Short Lived with Rich Matson and the North Stars. Okay. It sounds like home, and we are hanging out with Rich Matson and Jermaine Gemberling, and it is very exciting to be hearing this music from the new record. And we just heard Short Lived, and I wanted to ask a question because this song and the next song both have lyrics that seem to be kind of anti-technology, or at least feeling like technology can be overwhelming. I think you talk about cyberspace and the Short Lived one and maybe putting away your phone uh, in the Death Valley one. <laughs> are, are are you are you anti technology or is it just you want it to put it in the right place? Um, yeah, I think I just want to put it in the right place. I mean, you know, you, I, I'll, we'll be taking a road trip and and driving along, and and every car you pass or every car that passes you, whoever's riding in the car, they're they're looking at their phone. It's it's just. Missing the most beautiful scenery like, in the world. <laughs> look around. Don't forget to put that thing down once in a while and, and take a look at what's around you because because it's a beautiful world and, you know, just be a part of it, of what's there right in front of you. 
Well, I, I love that spirit, and I think it's really hard for people to be present um, in in the beautiful moments that we all are in. And I get the sense that maybe it's a little bit easier for people to find their way to those moments at a spot like Sparta, a spot where there's a little less uh, distraction and uh, a little more opportunity to, you know, I, I read about you walking the dogs in the woods every day and I just go, oh God, that sounds so peaceful and, and a, a mile away from thumbing through, you know, this thread and that thread on Twitter. Uh, do you sense that it's easier to connect with your music and with your writing in this world? And then honestly, I want to ask, do you feel like that's true for the other artists making their way in the iron range? Do you feel like there's a little more of a focus on the music and a little less on, you know, the, the social media side of things? Well, I'll tell you, I was almost going to interject there. I mean, I, I do get out and enjoy nature and walk the dog and, and get out and enjoy what we've got. But Sometimes my phone will tell me I averaged like three and a half hours per day of screen time, and I'm going, <laughs> whoa. But the, that's my social life lately, since we're not, you know, going out and meeting people. It's a lot of social media, a lot of checking in with friends and, and you know, seeing what's up in the world. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, we don't get the newspaper. We watch the TV news and we, you know, watch social media. <laughs> that's entertainment. Yeah. But uh, uh, um, to answer the second part of your question, I think when people get up here, yeah, they are they're they're away from the distractions of of being in the city or or being at home. You know, they can really focus and dig into the music. And the, the greatest part is just watching the, the way the band interacts and they they you know they bond while they're here. You know, they the the band gets to be the band. You know, and the brotherhood or the sisterhood. You know, everybody has a great time. Now that that did have me, I did have it did have me wondering, have you done any sessions with bands that they realize they hate each other's guts after like you know they they finished tracking the drums and and now they're up in northern Minnesota and they go I don't even like each other I can't believe we have to <laughs> spend a weekend. I, I witnessed and yeah somebody quit like during a session one time and a oh. lot of yelling was going on so that was like whoa. Yeah, that that was that was they weren't stranded here though. They they they, they just they stormed out and, and drove home to Virginia. But uh oh. <laughs> no, actually for the most part, man. I'd say about ninety eight point nine 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 percent of the mm -hmm. time people get along pretty well and have a good time. Well yeah. that's that that's a good ratio and I'm not surprised because you guys uh <laughs> put off such a good vibe in what in what y'all are up to tell me a little bit about this tune death valley which i understand you wrote when you were sort of near death valley uh how did it come about and uh what's the song all about well it just started with the music and it was one of those voice memos i had saved and and uh just didn't know where what the song was going to be about but i kind of like that do 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 and then we're we're driving through death valley jermaine and i in a rental car and we're driving along and and the and the, and the first line of the brochure it says there's plenty of life in death valley i was like how profound i'm gonna just roll with that and then, plenty of life in death valley and uh I don't know. It's just kind of about Death Valley and and the sights that we saw there, and I don't, it, it may be a parable to something else, but I'm not going to go into that because it's open to interpretation. I think a lot of our songs are inspired by like the outdoors and our travels and stuff like that. And yeah, yeah. Kiss the Sky was inspired by travels and the national parks, which we love. Yeah. <clears throat> Shout out to the national parks. Let's check out Heck this yeah. tune, Death Valley. Rich Matson and the North Stars.
Sounds Like Home 8. I'm Sean McPherson. We are hanging out with Rich Matson and Jermaine Gemberling, and we are talking about this new record from the North Stars, and that tune is Death Valley. The harmony vocals on that are breathtaking, and I am just very, very impressed with the vocals from both of you throughout the project. Um, but on the last tune we're going to hear, How Can It Be, this is one, Jermaine, where you really shine. Um, and I was curious um, what your relationship with this tune is, and then how you figure out who's going to handle leads on different vocals on different songs, excuse me. Well, generally the songs that I write, I just do the lead on because I wrote them. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I always am open to any harmonies with Rich because he's the first person I really ever did harmonies with and it just is so organic and natural. So we just find a place in any of the songs that I write um, for him for sure. And then when Kyle can join in that's awesome too to have a three-part harmony um i wrote two songs on this current album and kiss the sky was more of a ballad and we had ryan young play violin on that one and i'm singing lead throughout that more and rich comes in on the um chorus and then um yeah i wrote how can it be and it sounded good to have him sing through the whole thing with me. So um, we have a lot of songs like that. Yeah, where we we'll just do the whole thing. harmonize just, the whole way through. You know, we've just always been big fans of harmonies. Mm -hmm. So whenever we can work that in, it's it's what we're going to do. One of our favorite bands that mutually as we grew up with in our parents' collection was the Birds. So that's not a surprise yeah. with the ingrained harmonies. But yeah, that's kind of how that uh, came about. So. And then, um, as I said, with that song, uh, typically when I write a song, I start with the melody in my head and then kind of find the parts on guitar and then, but the lyrics on that song came a little bit later. I, I had the first verse written when we recorded it with Keely and everybody, but then I kind of waited a few months and then that's where the second and third verse came. So they were well, a little more timely it... with 2020. <laughs> <laughs> The, the mm -hmm. whole tune is fantastic, and, and throughout the album, the harmony singing, it's, it's, it's really on point. I'm excited to get into the How Can It Be tune, but I want to ask um, about how the scene is in general uh, on the Iron Range right now. Rich, you said some of the people who are coming into the studio are from right in the area. Um, are there bands to look out for, and are you still seeing this increase in a focus on original music as opposed to cover band stuff? Yeah, the, the original music scene really kind of took off over the past... 10 years or so, uh, oh, 
with this club here. I got to do a shout out to the two on eight, mm -hmm. and uh, which is no longer. But I have a feeling it might come back in some okay. way, shape, or form. But the 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 bars up here are pretty open to have an original music, and people are just really supportive of it. And it, it's something different, and it's just so supported and and it's exciting and you know i i don't know i i played a part in it and every you know we have this thing called the iron range original music association iroma iroma mm -hmm. and and uh, you know it just caught on and and people just crawling out of the woodwork wanting I mean, to share their music yeah i could i could shout out a bunch of Names, but I don't want to leave anybody out. There's, there's yeah. uh, Horse a lot more Face, than guess. Brothers Burn Mountain, mm -hmm. Christopher David Hansen Band, Iron Range Outlaw Brigade, Sarah uh, Alexander, Sarah um, Alexander. Oh boy, uh, yeah. Annie Humphrey. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. Shout out the whole Iroma crew. I'm in. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. really. I, 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 I don't want to leave anybody out. Yeah, I mean, pretty much between, uh, surprisingly, well, Duluth to Grammary, to Ely, and where we live on the Iron Range, there's just a lot happening. There's venues and, mm -hmm. and Grand uh, Rapids. support, um, and yeah, mm -hmm. it's really fun. Well, thank you for clarifying that, because I think there's still some Twin Cities residents that think it's basically a no man's land besides for the Twin Cities. And I've known for a long time it's not like that. So it's it's really cool to hear that clarified. Now, y'all are no strangers to playing shows in the Twin Cities, and you got a pretty big one coming up. Uh, you're releasing your record, or rather celebrating the release of your record, and Dan Israel is celebrating the release of his record. That's happening on June 10th at the Hook and Ladder. What can we expect out of that show? Well, we're gonna come bursting out of the gates because oh, so we're we're just so you know we 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 had such a great time recording these songs for this show that that we're mm -hmm. on right now. We we got we got this friend of ours. His name is Bill Boyce. He came over with a five camera setup, and we w ran through the the soundboard. And that's the first time we've played together since October, and it was. It was, like, them pretty it was good. like Christmas, my birthday, and the mm -hmm. 4th of Every July all, all at once. <laughs> it was so much fun. We had a great day. We recorded these songs. We actually recorded about five more, too, while we were at it. And then we went out and grilled up some burgers and had a <laughs> had a great night. And, yeah, it was phenomenal. I mean, <laughs> we, we're rich, a band that really loves each other. I didn't know if I was going to get to, the... I we, I was we gonna get to this, Rich. <laughs> is your love language grilling burgers? Because, like, I, I saw a thing where you were like, right before COVID hit, I was out grilling burgers. And then I saw a thing on your Instagram, like, a year later, you're like, COVID's getting better. I'm grilling burgers. Is that is that the only way you communicate you know, you love? Know the is... I don't eat a lot of burger. I don't eat, I barely eat any hamburger at all. But, you know, when I do, hey, it's on. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and now uh, uh, that's very cool that y'all be coming down to do hook and ladder on June 10th and, and, and busting out of the seams to share. But for our friends up north, um, do you got any gigs up in that area? We'll, we'll be at Earth Rider Field a couple times this yeah. summer. Uh, one in May and one And then another in one in July. July. Mm -hmm. uh, keep an eye on that. They they have some great music. It's a nice social distance field. Yeah, they're doing it right. World-class stage. It's, it's just, it's awesome and uh then there will be some other shows up on, in the northland they're going to be doing concerts by the fountain at alcott park on tuesday nights which is going to be great there will be a, a band every week at alcott park in virginia and what and else rich will be, be grilling happy? burgers yeah <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> yeah just fight <laughs> burgers and brats <laughs> Well, you know, let's let's get into this last tune led by Jermaine. And I just want to say thank you, not only for running an awesome studio and putting out awesome records, but being such great ambassadors for a part of our state that can often really get overlooked when it comes to music and when it comes to like cultural offerings in general. So thank you for that. Thank you for the time today. And uh, really excited to check out this tune led by Jermaine. How can it be? It's Rich Matson and the North Stars. Have a beautiful one. Thanks for having us on thank the show. Thank you so much.
Thanks for tuning in to Sounds Like Home, a virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music from across the state. Sounds Like Home and the artists performing during the festival is sponsored by Gardner Builders and made possible by Minnesota's Legacy Amendment and you. Your support keeps the current strong and makes sure that independent music and the emerging artists featured today always have a home on The Current. All Sounds Like Home sessions will be archived at thecurrent.org because great music lives here.